In our last few videos, we've been talking about the acres of diamonds. We've been speaking about it from many different perspectives. The idea is reflecting the light on different opportunities, resources, relationships, and thus revealing prosperity. In relationship with the series of discussions, I want to get into another chapter from Charles Fillmore's book, Prosperity. I titled this mind map, Faith in the Invisible Substance. We're going to discuss a handful of quotes, and we're going to reflect it upon three important components, tying it also into our last series of discussions. Number one, keeping your mind fixed on the prosperity you are. We've been speaking about this as we've been getting through the discussions with Charles Fulmore's work, that you are the prosperity that you seek. And what we're doing is we are expressing it or revealing it. Prosperity can be looked at as many different expressions. There are relationship-based prosperity components. There's financial prosperity. There's prosperity in health, happiness. Prosperity is a state of being, and it's reflected as the different opportunities, the people, the circumstances, the environments in multiple different areas of our life, revealing the prosperity within ourselves, connecting with the prosperity within ourselves. Which brings me to my second point, the inner knowing of intuition. So if prosperity is who we are, then we must be guided back to the realization of our prosperity as far as our state of mind goes, because it is who we are. So we always go back to who we are. If you look at a child and they go through a journey and they have a lot of curiosity, I've been watching a number of videos of those that have created a lot of success in their lives. And one of the commonalities that I would find is that they would track back to stages in their childhood where they would see these certain signs and certain fascinations. And these fascinations and signs would somehow play a role in who they were becoming. These fascinations, signs, were right there in the beginning from intuition guiding them on the pathway. Now, I also want to tie it into point number three, which is re-expression and saturation of the truth of prosperity. If for whatever the reason may be, you were raised in an environment that encouraged the prosperity within you, and your mind was saturated through conversations, through information, through people, through environments, through life experiences, that was constantly affirming that true prosperity nature that was within you, what you would find is that you would automatically know what to do, what to say, what not to do. We call this Wu Wei. And you'd be living from this deep connection with intuition to reveal your prosperity. And then the saying would be true to you, everything you touch turns to gold. Now, many of us, including myself, we weren't around these kinds of environments in the earlier stages of the journey. Although there's a lot of appreciation for everything you learned in the earlier stages of the journey, as an individual, we have a mission, which is to connect back to this prosperity regardless of the environmental conditions. And what begins to happen is we release certain beliefs, interpretations, assumptions, perspectives that seem to create unnecessary friction in the mind in relation to reflecting the light on the people, the environment, the circumstance, the information, the opportunities, the assets, and connect them in interesting ways to bring forth the prosperity. If you look at entrepreneurial prosperity, we'll be able to see the synchronistic connections between the individuals, the assets, the resources that make up the whole, which reminds me of a story. Many of you know I refer back to my relationship with Iris Reading. I'm bringing him up a lot over this last few weeks, Paul. And as I'd mentioned, I was in Fort Lauderdale and we're working on a public speaking program together. Effective, influential communication that is designed to stimulate behavioral or transformational change in the audience, which is, through the Neville Goddard conversations, really changing ourselves to reflect accordingly. So we're working on this. 
And a story pops into my mind when during a time when my IT business was growing, I found myself uh, involved with a lot of these projects in relation to IT that I had to actually transition a little bit more so away from teaching these speed reading workshops. At one point, I was doing them Saturday and Sunday. A lot of you know I took on the initiative because I wanted to improve my public speaking skills, and I felt that it was a very valuable service to teach others. You can look at it as intuitive reading. Now, as I had continued down this pathway and the business was growing, I had to transition, and synchronistically, one of my clients actually introduced me to somebody who was teaching workshops, and they just formed the connection. They said, you know, maybe you should meet this individual and him and I met. His name is Timothy. And I realized that he was actually the perfect match, perfect fit to take on the responsibility while I transitioned, while I sidestepped into other opportunities that needed attention. He also ended up becoming a client of mine. He needed a lot of services for web design and internet business. And that was something that through some partnerships I was offering at that time. And so not only did he become the speed reading instructor, but he had his own business and I was offering services to him and fulfilling on the services. Plus it was further building the relationship with Paul. And all of these connections were formed as a result of maintaining what we're going to talk about here in this discussion. Charles Fillmore says, the foundation of every work is an idea. Faith is the quality of mind which makes the idea stand out as real not only to ourselves, but to others. When others have faith in a thing you are doing, making or selling, they see it as real and worthwhile. Then your success and your prosperity are assured. Only that exists in whose becoming really visible or valuable, you have great faith. If you say and believe, I have faith in the substance of God working in and through me, to increase and bring abundance into my world, your faith will start to work mighty in the mind substance that makes you prosperous. So another way of looking at this is that connecting back to what we're saying all throughout our discussions, loyalty to the unseen reality, that's how we look at faith. We have a vision, a goal, something that we desire to see brought forth. If it's from the regards of prosperity, then we know that some way, somehow, we're going to bring it forth. And it's going to be brought forth in a very interesting way. All we have to do is allow, as he states here, I have faith in the substance of God working in and through me to increase and bring abundance into my world. Allow. What prevents the allowing? Well, we call this disempowering or limiting beliefs, interpretations, assumptions, which is why we keep with the alchemical tradition, and we call this the journey of purification of the mind, which happens on the journey. As a person identifies this kind of inaccurate thinking within themselves and changes this inaccurate thinking at a subconscious level through self-talk, audio affirmations, visualization, or any kind of subconscious mind work, revision, even environment, placing yourself in certain environments that stimulate certain connections, Reality is an expression of what is within the mind, and the truth is your nature is prosperity, so there's always prosperity that exists in our external. All we have to do is put our attention on it, and that impresses the subconscious, and then re-expresses it again. And we see the connections as a result of it. A person might say, well, how do you find these connections? Certainly there are a lot of business books, a lot of trainings and seminars, marketing, sales, where one can go in and be inspired by the various strategies, the techniques that were used by others. What I would also suggest is to combine that with the inner work, which is really the identification and removal of inaccurate thinking. And one of the core aspects of this inaccurate thinking is the separation between you and the prosperity that you are, if it exists. Because if a person does not believe that they are prosperity, then they will infuse their thinking. They'll be thinking from that state of mind that is not one with the prosperity. So what we want is a prosperity-based state of mind. So he says, let us all know that just now 
we are in the very presence of creative mind, the mind that made the universe and everything in it. It's happening through you. It calls us the creative mind, the mind of all. As we say in the Kabbalion, the all is mind. And you are that expression of it. And that mind represents prosperity. Although many of us might not realize it, but we'll continue on this journey to realizing it more so. Through the commitment of not swaying away from the vision. In other words, if something were to show up and we experience reactivity or certain disempowering thought processes about ourselves in relation to whatever it is we're dealing, be it a conversation with a team member, be it a prospecting call with a potential client, be it an opportunity that we want to move forward with, but for some reason we seem to be hesitating about. We start to look at these things more from the perspective of opportunity because as we identify the inaccurate thinking that seems to create this kind of of added convolution in relation to these attributes, what we find is we can change it. We change the meaning through the affirmations or through seeing it differently, adopting a different perspective. As we do it, what we notice is that we automatically harmonize and connect with whatever that attribute is in a harmonious way. person then finds flow in connecting with their team members, going through what we call difficult conversations. They now turn into flow-based conversations. A lot of times you'll find when it comes to bringing forth prosperity is the conversations that we have with our prospects, our team members, our clients, vendors, and so forth contain hidden gems. They are also representation of the acres of diamonds. And all we have to do is just go beyond the surface level of inaccurate thinking, of separation between how we might assume that individual is in relation to us and bring it back more into an accurate thinking of prosperity. And we'll find that we're actually saying the same thing from different perspectives. Like the diamond that reflects the light on one perspective, which is the connection between the two, such as the example I gave earlier. Now, I would also say this was more in the earlier stages of my journey, but it wasn't too early because that was, you know, a few years into business. I had actually made a commitment to myself that I was going to saturate my mind with entrepreneurship. So I surrounded myself with entrepreneurs. I would listen to podcasts around that time when I would visit client sites or I was driving or servicing clients in downtown Toronto, taking the subway, easiest, fastest way to get to clients, minus the traffic. I would listen to podcasts at double speed. I would saturate my mind because I wanted my mind to be so saturated with prosperity-based thinking that automatically it would reflect. Some way, somehow, it would reflect. You would see the opportunity and you'd move forward with it. This would be the intuition guiding you. Things would seem so apparent. Things would just show up and you would know. So he says, it may be hard for those who have become attached to material things to realize that there is an invisible real life and substance that is much more substantial and real than the material. Now this is important for us because what we want to recognize is that the expression or reality, was once sourced in the mind. If all is mind, and this universe is mental, and it's happening through us, then it's sourced from within. And we have the power to change it. As mentioned in earlier stages, we, for whatever the reason may be, may have been in certain circumstances, or in the presence of certain information, in which we form certain connections, interpretations about ourselves in relation to prosperity, and we started to think a certain way and believe a certain way, which we would call limiting or disempowering. Now, as a result of it, we seem to not see it, the prosperity, in the five sensory world. However, this is where we have to return back to the faith of our vision. Because if a person keeps returning back to their vision, which for me was things like reading the affirmations in the morning when I wake up and before I go to sleep, 
or keeping the definite chief aim card, which I learned from Thinking Grow Rich with me and reading it as needed. Because then as I would listen to those podcasts or have the conversations with others or watch the videos or whatever kind of information I was consuming at the time, I was relating it a little bit more so, although now I'm more aware of it, so I'm sharing it more so, to my vision. I always say this, see everything is in harmony and in contribution to your vision. Because then what happens is the mind gets saturated with that information and the perspectives in relation to that information. And as a result of it, we can see beyond what appears in this five sensory world, more so than we have done before, and actually be able to see the opportunities and actually be able to connect the opportunities, see them all the way to completion, work with them in creative ways to bring forth innovation, prosperity. More accurately put, reveal our prosperity. That's the theater that plays out as a result of the recognition of the unity with the prosperity. He says, in comparing substance and matter as regards their relative reality, one scientific writer says that matter is merely a crack in the universal substance. It is a universal substance that man is handling all the time with his spiritual mind. So we refer to this as what we are imagining, what we are thinking, what we are interpreting. Every time we do that, we are working with this invisible substance. And every time we assume that to be true, we are actualizing it in some shape or form. What a person can do is observe what are they saying I am to. When they read a piece of information or they listen to a, somebody communicate about something, be it empowering or disempowering or limiting or uplifting, remember, we are the only interpreter. So we can then consciously say, what are we saying I am to? Or not. Because if we don't say I am to it, then it doesn't re-impress the subconscious and it doesn't re-express through us via the subconscious. Because most of this stuff, as we've been discussing, is happening outside of conscious awareness. It's happening unconsciously. We don't really have to think about those ways, although if you wanted to study it more so, you can get deeper into this kind of stuff with the more esoteric information. However, he says, it is universal substance that man is handling all the time with his spiritual mind. So we've been calling this the fourth dimensional thinking or visualizing yourself as the ideal. Now, the beautiful thing is if you place yourself in environments, in conversations, and if you allow your mind to be saturated with ideal information, what you'll find is you'll automatically stimulate the spiritual mind to think from those perspectives. Just as you can stimulate the subconscious mind, through your own internal dialogue, inner conversations, what we're thinking, what we're imagining, we can also stimulate the subconscious mind through the five sensory experience. Because where did we get this information that, for whatever the reason may be, seemed to have created a disconnect between the true prosperity that we are in the earlier stages of our journey? It was from the five sensory world. Because if we had listened to, as going back to the start of this conversation, those hunches and inclinations in childhood of who we were destined to be, then in that moment, we would have been encouraging within ourselves. And some might actually be in environments like that where others had encouraged them in those earlier stages to encourage those intuitive hunches and inspirations of who they were destined to be in the earlier stages. So we work with it both ways. He says, that is why we must hold the thought of divine wisdom and understanding so that we may use these creative mind powers righteously. So that becomes the current responsibility to use these creative mind powers righteously. What does that mean? If you go deeper into it, we have a vision. You have a goal. You have something that you desire to see brought forth. And this is what you love. And the creative mind powers are called upon and expressed through you as you maintain your attention on what is related and what is in harmony to that particular vision, what you love and desire to see brought forth. Now, what we find is this journey continues. So I've got current goals 
and I'll have future goals. And I've always had goals for some reason. If I don't have goals, I find myself being very disoriented, as Napoleon Hill refers to in Outwitting the Devil. My mind begins to drift onto random things. And these random things impress my subconscious mind, and I see more of these random things in reality. And it's not really random. It's just me saying unconsciously, I allow my mind to drift. It brings forth drift-based attributes in which then I sense confusion. And I'm saying, maybe I like this, maybe I don't like it. Some things I like, some things I don't like. Reality seems more random rather than precise and accurate to what I truly desire to see brought forth, the vision. So I just always have a goal. I always have a vision. I always have a definite chief aim. And when it's brought forth, I commit to another one. And I have multiple ones, different areas of life. I weave them all together. You know, I've got health and fitness goals. I've got business goals. I've got relationship goals. I've got different goals in life that are important to me. And they're all woven together because some way, somehow, they're all related to each other. And I ensure that through the inner dialogue, I'm able to see the relatability. Now, what this allows a person to do is what he says here. We use them all the time, either consciously or unconsciously. We should use them to our advantage and blessing. And the advantage and blessing that we're referring to in this video is that you are that prosperity. You are the prosperity that you seek. The way to practice this is, when we tie this into another book here, one of my favorites, I've been bringing it up recently as well, James Allen's The Heavenly Life, in which he says, He who resolves that he will not rest satisfied with appearances, shadows, illusions, shall, by the piercing light of that resolve, disperse every fleeting fantasy and shall enter into the substance and reality of life. He shall learn how to live, and he shall live. He shall be the slave of no passion, the servant of no opinion, the votary of no fond error. Now we're talking about maintaining a centeredness, an ability to see things from many different perspectives and accurately respond. We've been discussing this once in a while, and I'll probably add to more discussions in relation to this attribute, which we learned from the book The Kabbalion, which is the principle of polarity. There are many different degrees when we look at two sides of the same coin, the easiest example is hot and cold. It can get hotter, it can get colder. There's all the degrees in between. There's one way of looking at things, and then there's another way of looking at things. And then there's all the varying degrees, the different perspectives within. When a person is fixed and their mind is lightheartedly saturated by the vision, they will see all things in harmony and be able to look at whatever is revealed from the accurate perspective, which is somewhere in between the scale, and feel peace while looking at it. That's how we know that we are not drifting. That's how we know we're guiding back ourselves to this prosperity, which is us. And it's also quite fun, I would say, because who doesn't want to reveal their prosperity? Everyone that I talk to wants to bring forth more prosperity. And again, the prosperity can be looked at from many different perspectives. Now, we want to maintain true to this, going back to the earlier part of our conversation. Keeping our mind fixed on the prosperity that you are. So we want to remind ourselves, perhaps maybe listen to this video a number of times. And remind yourself that you are the prosperity. Prosperity is who you are. You are allowing yourself through what you imagine and believe to be true to reveal that prosperity. And number two, we are guided via intuition. You were guided since you were a child and you will be continuously guided back to the prosperity. And number three, what has been expressed or what has been revealed right here, as James Allen says, we could say, I am not satisfied with these appearances, these shadows and illusions until they reflect 
the true prosperity, until the five sensory experience reflects the true prosperity, the reflection of the vision. Now, this is not done from a place of force or from a place of frustration, but rather from a place of embracing the journey to the destination. The journey is riddled with experiences. I mean, I love to share these stories, and I feel every day I'm experiencing even more stories that when I continue to make these videos perhaps years from now, the stories of today that I'm experiencing in my life on this journey will be the ones that I reflect upon in those videos. We all have stories. We all have life experiences. And all those stories and life experiences, we want to see them as in harmony and in contribution. Because then a person has made peace that everything was contributing to their prosperity. If they saw certain attributes in their past as not contributing to their prosperity, then they may have some internal resistance surrounding the nature of their true prosperity. And as a result of it, may experience re-expression of those doubts, fears, indecision, inaccurate thinking in the five sensory experience, and they'll be able to reflect upon it and integrate what James Allen says here, which is not rest satisfied with those appearances, shadows, and illusions, and with the piercing light of that result, which is to bring forth your vision. You will disperse all these illusions, shadows, and appearances, and bring forth your vision, and also enter into the substance and reality of life. This is part of the side effect of committing to a vision and bringing it forth. You start to understand even more so how reality works. And then when we revisit these kinds of discussions, we understand it even more. So let's go ahead and conclude this discussion today, which is really about revealing the prosperity within ourselves, recognizing that we are that prosperity. Number two, the recognition that when you have a vision and you commit to it, you are guided from within to reveal it. And what we want to do is listen to that intuition, the hunches, the inspirations. And if there's any inaccurate thinking surrounding it, doubts and indecision, regarding listening to the intuition, we can find out what that thinking is. Those are the interpretations that we can release from. Experience more flow, more automatic expression. We call this in the book flow by Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, autotelic, or in the Kabbalion, since we refer to this, stage of involution. And then as a result of it, the expression of identifying with these attributes of prosperity in our reality further impress the subconscious mind, and then continue to express as the people, the environment, the circumstance and information, and the ability to connect the dots bring us into that realization that everything we touch turns to gold. And then we recognize the truth as going back to the beginning here. He says, the foundation of every work is an idea. Faith is the quality of mind which makes the idea stand out as real. Not only to ourselves, but to others. When others have faith in the thing you are doing, making or selling, they see it as real and worthwhile. Then your success and your prosperity are assured. And we've been discussing that all change happens in consciousness. So all of these are the effects of that consciousness of prosperity. So let's go ahead and conclude this with an affirmation. We can say, I realize that I am the prosperity that I seek. I realize that the prosperity is automatically reflected, more so, in how I relate to others, in how I relate to information, in how I relate to environments and circumstance. As a result, I'm able to look beyond any shadows, illusions, and appearances and see the reality of my vision. As I continue to maintain this state of mind, I'm able to receive the hunches and inspirations of intuition guiding me to further understandings and revelations of the prosperity that I am. Through the process, my mind is saturated with thoughts and expressions, experiences that further impress the subconscious and reflect accordingly. This process repeats again and again till I'm further surrounded by the prosperity 
thus revealing the truth that I always was guided towards revealing this prosperity. I then realized that the substance is working in and through me to increase and bring the abundance into my world in the shape of form that I desire, which is the prosperity that I am. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.